Welcome to Fantastic Feast. I'm your host, Tui Fan. As the weather starts to cool down and fall starts to roll in, everything pumpkin is what everyone is all about. And I'm gonna show you how to make something today that is a showstopper. It's a pumpkin cheesecake with meringue marshmallow topping. That sounds really complicated, but it's not hard. You just have to break down the steps and if you were to bring it to a potluck or Thanksgiving dinner or anywhere, it's going to make you the most popular person there. Not only is it delicious, but it's also beautiful. Um, and this is something you can make as long as you have a food processor and then also a, a stand mixer. That'll make your life a whole lot easier. But I'll show you how to make it and it's really easy, but it's so good and that's what makes it so wonderful. What you need right here is a food processor and this is how we'll start to make the crust of this. Now traditionally when you make cheesecake, it can have a graham cracker crust or um, that's more traditional, but this has walnuts in it and it has flour, but it has a nice little crunch to it. So um, what we'll do first is we'll turn on our food processor. I have here one and one eighth cup of all purpose flour. We have eight tablespoons or one stick of melted unsalted butter. Here we have half a cup of walnuts and three tablespoons of light brown sugar. So we have here our trusty food processor and this will do the bulk of the work here today. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna take the walnuts and I'm going to pulse it just so it becomes finely chopped um, and then we'll mix all the ingredients together. So I have here half a cup of walnuts. And I'm gonna pulse it. So you want to pulse it just so you can break up the walnut pieces. And then now I'll add the sugar to it. It's three tablespoons of brown sugar. And we have here one and one eighth cup of flour. I'll pulse this together and then I'll slowly add the butter. Now we're at our melted butter in here. I have here one stick or eight tablespoons. This will bind it all together, make it nice and crumbly. Okay. And you want to pulse it until it becomes like small pea sized or kind of uh, starts to come together and it's all evenly incorporated. That's it. Can't tell you how easy that is. Okay, I want to show you the texture. So this is the texture that we're looking for. It's kind of crumbly and it's all kind of come together. And that's our crust. So what I have here is a nine inch spring form pan and this is gonna make it an easy release for you later on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to press the crust into here. It's beautiful, nice and golden. Once you have your crust in there, all you're gonna do is press it down like this. And you're going to spread it out to the bottom of the pan. Make sure that it's even. So now that you have your crust pressed in. What we're going to do now is bake this for about 10 to 12 minutes in uh, the oven at 350 degrees. And while that is baking, we'll make our filling. And then by the time that this is done baking, we'll put the filling in and then we'll bake it for 45 minutes to an hour in a water bath. Um, and then our cheesecake base will be pretty much done. So it's not too hard. So we'll put this in the oven and then get started on our filling. So now we have the crust in the oven and what we're going to do next is make the filling and we are still going to need the food processor so I just cleaned it out and what we're going to do next is combine all the ingredients here and just mix it up. So what we will need for this recipe for the filling is you will need one cup of pumpkin puree, 
um, and you can find this at any of the stores. And um, it's easier to use, I think, pre-made pumpkin puree. I think it tastes better than if you do the uh, fresh one. It's just a little bit more watery, it takes more time. This, they do it easy for you, so um, you can go straight ahead. You also need two blocks of cream cheese, which amounts to about one pound of cream cheese. Um, you need that at room temperature, otherwise it'll be really tough and the consistency won't be right, so make sure it's at room temperature. You need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You need a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then here is where our spice comes in. I have here is one teaspoon of cinnamon, and then half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and then a quarter teaspoon of allspice. And that's what's gonna really enhance the pumpkin flavor and really give it that unique um, pumpkin pie-ish fall flavor that you're so used to. So that'll really help flavor our pumpkin cheesecake. And here I have four eggs. Um, they are organic and that's why they're green um, and all different sorts of colors. So, and I have here also one cup of brown sugar. So we'll mix that all up and that's gonna form the filling that we're gonna put for our pumpkin cheesecakes. So what we're gonna need first is our sugar. We're gonna add one cup of sugar to our food processor. And then next we're gonna add the cream cheese. This is not exactly a fat-free dessert, but it is going to be worth the calories. So, and this cream cheese that will probably clog our arteries, but tastes so delicious in the meantime while it gets there. So, add two blocks of cream cheese. cream cheese and sugar is in and then we'll pulse that together and make sure it's all well blended and then we'll start adding the other ingredients to it. Probably run it for about a minute. So. Okay and you can kind of see it's got a pretty smooth texture and that's pretty good, so we'll start adding the other parts to it. Treat. So what I'm gonna add next is the vanilla extract. This is one teaspoon. We're gonna add our salt. And the salt will balance out all the sweetness. Then here we have our pumpkin pie spices. That'll give it so much wonderful flavor. Now we're gonna add our pumpkin. We will need one cup of this. Okay, and then you pulse this all together. And then we'll add our eggs one at a time. Mm. So nice and smooth. Make sure we will scrape down the sides. It's okay. And if you've ever had farm fresh eggs, you'll be able to tell the difference. The yolks are so much more orange and it's so much richer the yolk so it makes for a really fantastic dessert so if you can get your hands on uh, farm fresh eggs i would recommend it and our last egg So this is the consistency you want. It's really smooth and silky. And this is the filling for the cream cheese cheesecake. Beautiful. So this is the crust that we're looking for. It's nicely golden brown. And we wanna let that cool for a few minutes. And then we'll pour in our batter. 
So traditionally, cheesecakes are baked in a water bath. That'll help it cook evenly and to avoid cracks on top. So you will need a, a pan that's gonna be bigger than this um, uh, springform pan, and then you're gonna fill it with hot water so that it sits in a water bath. But before you do that, you need to line it with foil so that the water doesn't seep in. Um, so we have heavy duty foil here. And what I'll do is I'll wrap it double layer, um, and then we can pour in our filling and then put it into our water bath and start baking our cheesecake. We do two layers. Just make sure, pull it up. It doesn't look so pretty right now, but this makes sure that water doesn't seep into the springform pan and give you a very soggy cheesecake. So now that we have this all ready to go, I'm gonna pour in the cheesecake filling. And once that's in, we'll put it in the oven and then we should be ready to go. Just wanna pour it out. Mm, that looks so luscious. I'm telling you, this is a next level dessert. You're gonna love it. So that's your cheesecake right here. That was not too hard at all. And what we're gonna do now is bake this at 300 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour um, until it's firm, but kind of jiggly on the inside um, center area. And then while we're doing that, we're gonna make our meringue marshmallow topping. So by the time this is all ready, we'll stack it and then it'll be ready for the finale. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and then uh, give it a water bath. So let's do that now. So now our cheesecake is in the oven and it's baking. What I'm gonna show you how to make next is a marshmallow meringue uh, for the topping. And this is what's gonna give it its extra oomph at the end. That's gonna be the reason why this is gonna make you so popular at any potluck because it's a stunner. What we're gonna need for this is three quarters of a cup of egg whites. And depending on how large your eggs are, um, that could be four to six. You also need a cup of light brown sugar. And then I also have a quarter cup of agave nectar and then one vanilla bean. So that's gonna make something really wonderfully nuanced in our meringue topping. So you'll need a stand mixer for this, but what I'm gonna do first is put all the ingredients together and mix it um, over a kind of like a double boiler so that we kind of kill all the bacteria in the egg whites um, before we mix it. So um, that's what we're gonna do first. And so right here we have our stand mixer and you're gonna need the whisk attachment. Okay, so what I always like to do is just to have a bowl to put our egg yolks in and you don't want to throw that away. You can make curd out of it. You can do all sorts of things. So um, what we're going to do is see how many egg whites will be three quarters of a cup. So oops, crack it. Okay, we're almost there. A little messy. So we're gonna add this also to our bowl. And I'm gonna turn the stove on and have a little pot with about an inch of water. Um, so we're gonna sit this over there and whisk it up. And let's get that. Okay, and then the last step to this it's just our vanilla bean. We're gonna scrape it out so we can add an extra layer of dimension of flavor. And the vanilla bean just comes like this and I take it out from my vanilla extract. Um, and all you do is you just split it lengthwise. And then you split it out and all the seeds in here, you scrape it out. This is the gold. Oops. So this is what you're looking for. You just add that. Not including the flavor that you get from it too. Okay, so you just wanna make sure you got everything. And this is ready for our double boiler so we can heat it up. So now I've taken this off the heat and I boiled it or put it on the double boiler for about a minute 
and the sugar has dissolved and you can kind of see this is kind of the consistency. And what we're gonna do is use a stand mixer with the whisk attachment um, and whisk it for about five to six minutes until it gets uh, really fluffy and becomes that meringue that we're looking for. So the point of us doing this on the heat was to make sure that we um, kill all the bacteria in the egg whites so that we can make this meringue. So. Okay, so we've been whipping this for about six minutes and it's at the right consistency that we want. And you could tell when it comes to kind of stiff peaks and like this, and it doesn't move too much. So this is, that's so good. Um, it has a nice little flavor of the vanilla and also brown sugar. It gives it an extra uh, flavor to it. And the agave nectar is really mild in here, but um, this is what's gonna go on top of our uh, cheesecake and it's gonna be so awesome. Mm. I really like that. This is our marshmallow meringue. You can tell, you can see the little brown specks and this is gonna go on top of our cheesecake and it's gonna be so good. So we can put this in the fridge for a little bit to chill while we wait for our cheesecake to be done. So. Okay. okay, so our cheesecake is ready and it's been baking for about 45 minutes to an hour and it looks so delicious. But what we need to do is let it cool down. We'll need um, to make sure that it's completely cool to the touch before we add any topping to it or else it will melt. Um, so you can actually do this and then refrigerate it overnight. Um, and then when you're ready to serve it, put on the meringue topping and then torch it and then you're ready to go. But we'll let this cool down for a little bit before we uh, do anything to make sure that all our meringue hard work doesn't go to waste when we put it on. So what we want to do is we want to take a spatula and just kind of uh, unmold it. It'll make it a little bit easier for us later on. Okay, so the spring form pan has a little latch and release right here. Um, so what you're going to do, just unbuckle it and you're going to pop it up. And that's your cheesecake. It looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Okay. I have here my marshmallow meringue, and this is kind of free form, so if you were to do this in a way that was more, um, I guess, uh, not free form, you would put it in a piping bag, but it's totally okay for it to be um, kind of just whatever you want of it. So you're just gonna put this on top. Gonna just make a really nice pile. Oh my goodness, this is so awesome. And you could do this any way that you want. Pile it high if you want or not. Okay, so here's the cool part. Meringue torches so beautifully. So I had this little mini torch and we're gonna play with fire a little bit. Mm. Burnt sugar, so yum. This is my favorite part of it actually. You get that golden color. There you have it. That is your pumpkin cheesecake with marshmallow meringue. And it's so beautiful. Can you imagine bringing this to a potluck? Like everyone's gonna think that you bought it somewhere, but nope, you made that yourself in little to no time at all. And see, the consistency is just perfect. If you can look here, you can see the uh, meringue here and then the cheesecake. Let me make sure I have. Mm. 
That is so good. This is better than um, Cheesecake Factory, if I must say so myself. The marshmallow meringue is just so sweet and creamy. And then you have the luscious pumpkin cheesecake and the crust has a little bit of walnuts in there so it has a nice little crunch but together it's a little bit of tang with the pumpkin and then um, the cream cheese and then we have the marshmallow meringue. Mm. That is a perfect dessert. Wow. Even I'm impressed with myself. And this just screams fall and everything good about pumpkin result of our pumpkin cheesecake with marshmallow meringue and as you can tell it wasn't too much work and it came out so wonderfully delicious and also so pretty as well this is something that i knew once i made that it would go into my regular repertoire uh, of recipes and go to desserts and it is something different from your regular pumpkin pie so i think this really takes it up a notch and i think that if you brought this or made this for any family gathering that you would be a really popular person and that everyone would really enjoy it Thank you.